Hello, everyone. This is JD Calderon, and this is Indie Comics Explained. And once again, I brought on another fantastic guest. But before, please hit like, hit subscribe, share out the video, let everybody know we're here. And before I start, I just wanted to say um, I lost a friend not too long ago. Her name. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just had something buzzing in my ear. But I lost a friend recently. Her name was Meredith Logren. She was a great help to me and, and to the indie community. And she was a huge help to a lot of people. She did fantastic interviews. She was an incredible writer, an incredible person. And Meredith, we love you and we miss you. And, you know, be well and be with God. All right. But without, and now back onto the show, uh, we'll bring on our guest. How you doing, Tom? Good, 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 good. good. So, Tom, so uh, <laughs> like I said, it's it's a little weird, but it's great meeting you. It's the first time we've ever met, first time we've ever spoken, right? I've seen your books around for quite a bit, uh, 27 Kickstarter campaigns. Is that right? right? Is that yeah, right? I, I looked. I looked. Listen, I've done 24. You did the research? <laughs> yeah, I've done the research. I've done 24, and I saw yours as 27. I was like, Jesus, I thought I did a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. wild. That's wild. Twenties. Yeah. I mean, literally, I, didn't, I had no idea that that was the number. I knew we were in the twenties somewhere, but I didn't know that uh, we were twenty-seven. That's pretty wild. And and twenty. So basically, we're twenty-six and one uh, right. in 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 successes on Kickstarter. So uh, mm -hmm. I'd say we're doing pretty well, and and uh, yeah. you know, all is well. That's good. That's good. Now, uh, I got a question. I, I pretty much ask everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So there's little Tom, right? Little Tom was running around collecting his comics. It's not necessarily the first comic, right, you've ever gotten your hands, but what was that comic that you found that inspired you to want to do comic books? Okay, that's the hard question because, it, and and this is where I'm going to sound kind of like an ass because the reality is I'm not sure that that comic exists, right? Okay. Um, I can tell you that just conceptually the idea of comics has, has almost forever been in my life i mean I, I first comic book i ever bought was godzilla number uh, 16 the marvel series um mm -hmm. that was how i found comics i didn't know what a comic book was but i knew what godzilla was and i was at a flea market and sitting on top of a, of a stack of other comics was a godzilla comic and i'm like what in the world is that so i bought that godzilla comic took it home it was a ridiculous uh, story about godzilla fighting cowboys and I was like, oh, th this is there. There's more of these. Like I'm looking through the ads and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I went back the next week and I'm like, do you have more Godzilla comics? He's like, yeah, here's a couple more. And I'm like, oh, my God, uh, I'm, in, I'm in. I I, I loved the I, I loved everything about it. I love the art. I love the stories. I, I love the, the panels. I mean, just like everything about the what comics are. You know, I was immediately drawn into. And over time, because of the ads, I was like, oh, there's other comics. Like, oh, here's Ghost Rider. What is Ghost Rider? And I go mm -hmm. find a Ghost Rider book, so on and so on and so on. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, that led me to Wonder Woman and the X-Men and, and you know, just everything. And so comics just became part of my life. I mean, just in general. It was never a thing like, hey, I want to make comics and I need to, like, learn how to do comics. It was just like, I want comics, man. Get me more comics. Um, from collecting comics to uh, collecting art to being a comic book store owner to dealing in. I mean, I've done basically everything up until, you know, the creative part of it. And I I, I think, and, and this is actually a good, a good moment because we just had the 30th anniversary of Image Comics. I think mm -hmm. that, that that period of time was kind of what led me towards the thought process of, what if I made a comic? Like, could I make a comic? Like, how would I make a comic? Uh, cause image was out. All these indie new indie guys were popping out valiant and, you know, just Harris comics came around. Mm -hmm. They brought, I mean, just, it was a wild time for comic book expansion at that point. Um, beyond Marvel and DC. Uh, and so I think that kind of set the bug in me like, okay, how do I do this? Like what's, it's you know we look at entertainment like movie stars and and stuff like that and and a lot of us like myself are like yo i don't even know how to start like how would i become an actor or an actress or anything so the same thing with comics i'm like how do i draw a comic like how do i write a comic like how do you do this i had no idea um but 
flash forward like you know 20 years after that kind of thought process uh, that's when critter uh, came along and uh uh that's kind of what started my my route is i wanted to be an artist but i realized quickly that wasn't going to happen i just did not have the skills for it and so i fell back into writing her story and that's where i started to kind of figure out like okay how do i actually write a script what does it look like what does it need to be on and on and on and on did my research and and um you know critter critter and penny for your soul were born in 2010 12 years ago so um that's that's sort of the weird long answer to that i <laughs> i do have people that i like in the industry that are inspirations chris claremont was a big uh a guy for me um i you know i love the x-men i love his writing um i love his characterization uh todd mcfarlane i love basically everything that he did from you know, he wasn't like the greatest writer, right? But he right. knew how to visually tell a story. So mm -hmm. even if you had no words on the panels, like you're looking at that art, like, yo, man, this is like, this is something. I'm looking at something here. This is great. Um, and then just his whole attitude, you know, going into image and eventually going on to form his own toy company and just like vision, right? Vision, I think, is the key. Like, you got to have vision for what you want to do. Clearly, there are people that are like, I just want to make a comic. It's it's just vanity press. I just want to say I made a comic. But then there's folks that are like, well, how do I like make a business out of it? How do I like pay my rent making comics? Right. And that's a whole different path uh, and discussion that you got to have. But uh, mm -hmm. Chris Claremont, Todd McFarlane, those kind of guys kind of, I think, were, were you know, itching the back of my brain. Like, you, you can do this, man. You can do this. You just got to figure it out. And, you know, we went and figured it out. All right, cool. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, your process for when you write, are you, you know, there are the two types, right? There's a pantser and there's a plotter, right? And you got you that guy that's like a serial killer and you got the little notes and the strings. You're like, all right, like this, you know, or do you just sit down and just start hammering the keys? I, 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 it's kind of both. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes I will just dive in. In fact, as I'm writing this Ursa Minor book right now, as, as I was writing things, sometimes things pop out on the screen that I didn't know were going to be there. Like I just, I'm in, like, it's, it's like I'm in the scene, right? It's like I'm writing the scene, like the vampires go and talk to each other. And, you know, and all of a sudden, like I'm in the scene and, and things are happening that I didn't plan for them to happen. And that happens in a lot of my comics. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so I think I write, what I, what I do is I call it organic writing, right? So mm -hmm. I, I know that I have like, I have to go from A to B to C to finish the story. I know those bullet points have to right. exist uh, for the story to make any sense. But as I'm going through the scenes, if, if things happen, if the characters say or do something that I, I, I didn't expect necessarily, I will let the characters examine what's going on in there. And it might take me on a left or a right turn rather than staying on that straight path, those bullet points. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as conceptually, I know that if we're going to make a left turn, we still have to swing it back around to hit this next bullet point. But if that's the way the characters want to go, I'm going to let them go that way. Um, it's very rare that I'll be like, no, no, we're not going to go over here and, and, you know, kill this dog just because or whatever you know what i mean it's like right. that's dumb um there's been points in my stories where i i reached points that i in my head said this isn't right like th this is what i wanted to do but mm -hmm. i got here and it's not right reverse go back in figure it out create a better uh uh finale or, or, or reveal or whatever it is so sometimes i will reverse course but oftentimes uh, even those reverse courses are because the characters did something that I wasn't ready for. Uh, mm -hmm. and I, and I wanted to go back and examine it because I thought, well, maybe they have a better idea than I do and we'll go, we'll go see what they're doing. Um, so it's a little bit of both, but when I finally do get to the computer, it is very page one panel one, the people do this panel two, the people do this, they say this, it's very, mm -hmm. I guess DC style is what they call it. Marvel style right. is, is more mm -hmm. open. I'm, I'm very DC style when I'm actually like typing. Um, but there will be days where I don't even type, but I'm still writing because I'm mm -hmm. in my head. I'm thinking about, right. I don't know, what, what should this dumb vampire say to this other dumb vampire? 
<laughs> I don't know. You know, sometimes I get hung up just on dialogue and I'm like, I can't, I get stuck there and I can't yeah. move forward until I can break that, that, that moment. Right. Uh, and then mm-hmm. it's like, Oh, I got it. Get on the computer. Type, 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 type. Okay, good. And then, then I'm doing mm-hmm. like five pages Then I'm, then I'm screaming, but uh, it's like, I, I will get stuck sometimes and it'll, it'll hold me up for, for sometimes days trying to figure out how do I do this transition? What's the right dialogue? What's the pacing? What's, Oh my God, I don't know what to do here. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it is definitely a little bit of both, but I, I organic is what I call it. I love organic storytelling because it doesn't feel like something was forced to happen. Um, right. or at least that's the goal. So that when the yeah. readers, you know, reading it, they're not like, it, it's not so rigid. I, I like it mm-hmm. to feel like it flows. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree completely. Um, you know, it's one of those things. Um, one of the things that fascinates me is the, the three, uh, you know, the three act structure, sure. right? You know, it, it fascinates me when I see, when I see it done, and it's done correctly, but it it's but it's always like it hits those beats really hard, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, there was a TV show I remember called Monsters. I don't know if you remember from back. Oh, in the sure, day. yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Of course. So it was the opening, right? Something happens, and then it was the center, whatever, and then that closure, and it would just and it hit those beats so hard. It was like bam, bam, bam every week. It was fascinating. So yeah, so that's mm-hmm. why I always ask that question. Is just like you know how do you structure that out for you so now yeah and with with a tv show like that it's a little different or with a movie because Mm -hmm. you have a finite amount of time to do what it is you want to do you know it's like people talk about south park south park is like these guys are really great at the three-act structure Mm -hmm. because they know Mm -hmm. they have this much time to tell their story and then they're in they're out they're done with comics Mm -hmm. it's a little different um just because you know that you have like a mini series uh or or an ongoing series or whatever um, so y- there, there's some leeway in that, uh, in that, that structure, but even within the issue, you kind of need to have like the, this is where we start. This is sort of the, the problem that has to be solved or whatever it is. And then you kind of, you know, you have to finish it without finishing it. You have to leave that door open, you know, for issue two, issue three, issue four, um, when you then finally do kind of, you know, wrap it all up, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, um, now. When you're working with, like, here's one for you. So I know you've you've obviously worked with a lot of artists, right, mm-hmm. over the years. Now, how, what's your process for breaking one in, or you know, just collaborating, initial collaboration? Because you know, it's always there's always that that when you first get in, you're just like, okay, they, can they do this? Can they not do this? I mean, how, how do you deal with that? It's it, you know, for me, if if I'm hiring you, you've already proven me that you can do it. At that point, mm-hmm. it's just a matter of creating the system for, for the two of you, like what, what is going to be this like, and and for me, I try and keep it as, as uniform for everybody as possible. It's like, particularly when we're talking about interiors, it's like, yo, look, I don't want you to do a ton of work and then turn it in. And then I'll be like, yo, you draw this character completely wrong. All these costumes are wrong. Like you got to fix it. So Mm -hmm. what I always tell them is like, look, let's just lay the book out. Give me the basic panel to panel page design type of thing. We'll make sure that the storytelling works, uh, then go in, you know, flesh it out so I can see what you're drawing um, uh, character wise, costume wise, make, make sure you've got sort of the way everybody's supposed to look right mm-hmm. before you do your final pencils or inks or whatever. Uh, and then again, we can fix things before you move on. Cause some, I think had guys that would come in and do like, well, here's the first five pages. And I'm like, Oh shit, you <laughs> screwed this up and it's on all five pages. And now mm-hmm. it has to be fixed on all five pages. So just give me that one. Let's make right. sure it's it's happy because we can fix the problem fast and mm-hmm. then we don't have to worry about it the rest of the way. So it's just a matter of, of finding the flow and, and the pace for it. Um, it really hasn't been a problem overall. There's been a few guys that are a little overzealous and I'm just like, yo, I told you, man, just give me one page because right. we got an issue that we got to fix here. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't want them to do that. It's not like I'm I'm upset that they were like going. That was, that's great. I mean, I love the energy, but it's like, if there's a problem, I'd rather fix it once than have to fix Mm -hmm. it five times, 10 times. Um, So, you know, uh, most of the time, like I said, it's, it's, it's rarely been a problem. And usually if it is a problem once, it's never a problem again, because they're like, Oh crap, I get it. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and it just kind of settles in and it's no big deal. All right, cool. Now. um, So you 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 started your publishing company, Big Dog Inc., 2010, mm-hmm. right? 
Well, now, technically we existed prior to 2010, but I, I use 2010 as our anniversary because that's when we were first published. We were actually gotcha. in comic shops uh, in 2010. So that's sort of our true beginning. Right. Now, what in your life caused you to say, okay, now's the time? Um, it was actually just a side thing that I was doing. I had a nine to five job, uh, that I had mm -hmm. had for, for many years. Uh, but you know, comics, like I said, comics were just always with me. So, um, I started to develop comics and started to write Penny for Your Soul and Critter while I was doing the nine to five job. Um, and, and the idea was just, it'll just be, like I said, just Vanity Press. Let me just make a comic. We'll go to like local cons sometimes and just have fun doing it, whatever. Um, but then in 2009, uh, right before, you know, the United States collapsed, uh, <laughs> with the, with the stock market and everything, um, mm -hmm. housing market and all that, uh, I lost my job. And mm -hmm. at that point it was, okay, well, I have all of this. Is there a way for me to like, take a jump at it, you know, at the dumbest time possible, you know, right? when people are like, you know losing their houses and stuff. Let me go make comics. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, this is smart. Um, but I was like, before I go get the Walmart job or whatever it is, I, let me just see what I can do with this. And, um, you know, at the time I was, I was married. And so we had some, some bonus help in the house. I wasn't a single, uh, income family. So there was a little bit of some, some balance there, mm -hmm. um, which helped. And then, uh, but you know, we got the books out and it was, it was like a groundswell. It was, it was like, we sold out a penny for your soul first nice. printings like instantly. Uh, we went back to a second print. Um, we had very little attrition uh, from mm -hmm. issue one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, we were doing variant covers with guys like Eric Basil Dua and Nia Rafino uh, mm -hmm. almost right off the bat. It was like, this is, this is freaking wild, man. Um, so it's, it's like, it's almost like we walked right into this wide open door that was like waiting for us. Um, and we brought books at that time. It was Critter and Penny for Your Soul. We brought books that people, uh, were engaged in. They were like, yo, this is kind of cool. Like, what is this? Is there more? Um, we were going slowly. We were putting books out every other month, uh, mm -hmm. so that we could, you know, stay on schedule, um, all that kind of stuff. And, and it just worked. It just worked. And so the following year, uh, 2011, uh, we, we put out our third book, which was the legend of Oz, wicked West. That one hit the diamond top 300. Um, it was our best selling title at the time. It was, like, Oh my God. Okay. I think we have something happening here. Uh, mm -hmm. and so, you know, it got hyper-focused and, and, you know, just kind of never looked back. Nice. Okay, cool. Now talking about diamond now, were, were you initially always just when you started, did you just go straight through diamond and just said, you know, just foregone, like forget doing, you know, well back in the day, 2010, there, right. there really wasn't Kickstarter. There, there was, there weren't really the option. I mean, there was barely even social media in 2010. Right. Uh, Facebook was barely a thing. So mm -hmm. um, at the time it was like, how do you make a comic? Well, you make a comic, you send it to diamond. You hope they take it. They put it in previews. You hope the, the retailers see it and buy it. Mm -hmm. Retailers buy it that you hope the people sell it. Uh, people <laughs> right. see it on the shelf and buy it, you know, uh, and then you do it again, you know, a couple of months later. So um, that was the way. I mean, that was really mm -hmm. the way. Um, right. And so because I had been so ingrained in the way just from my being a collector, I understood it from that standpoint. I ran somebody else's shop for five years, ran my own mm -hmm. shop for five years. Um, I understood the diamond system. I, you know, I, I, I knew how it worked. I knew why it worked. Um, and I knew how to kind of attack it, uh, theoretically, uh, with, with mm -hmm. what we were doing. And, and I did it. I just, I kind of, it's, it's all been osmosis for me. Like I've had never had like writing mentors or comic book mentors, or, I mean, I'm a D student in English man. And I'm a writer as a, as a living. So I don't know what's mm -hmm. going, I don't know what this, anything can be done in this world. Uh, cause I'm, I'm living proof that, that, you know, the person that shouldn't be a writer, uh, you know, is a writer. So it's like, wow, but everything is osmosis for me. It's like, I so many comics, so much reading, so much just, just kind of packed into my head and then running the shops. I understood that side of it. And so, you know, I just kind of used all that knowledge and, uh, you know, pushed us into diamond and, and they were happy with us. Um, and I was like, okay, let, let's just keep going then. All right, cool. Now, 
at what point did you say, uh, all right, this new thing, Kickstarter, just uh, just started developing? And at what point did you say, when should we jump into that one? Well, this this that was a whole different thing because, like, for our first four years, we were Big Dog Inc. just by ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we reached a point where we kind of felt like we've hit that glass ceiling. We're, we're not figuring out ways to break through and and get our books from selling, you know, three thousand units to selling five thousand units. We're just mm -hmm. we can't quite figure out how to do it. Um, and so we actually partnered with Aspen Comics for three years. They became our publisher. Uh, we moved everything over to them. Um, and they became our publisher for three years. Um, but, and, and during all that time is kind of when Kickstarter started really popping. And so we did a couple of Kickstarter tests to see what would happen. So that our first, our first was uh, lights, camera jungle that I did with Jen Brumall. Uh, and then the next one, the following year was Kaiju Epic, uh, which I did with my editor, Carrie Caster and they did okay, but we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, right. It was all just like, okay, I'm going to throw something against the wall. And, mm -hmm. and if it sticks, great. And if it doesn't, we'll, we'll figure out why. Um, but as we came out of that, that's when Aspen uh, uh, sold some portion of the, the comic book publishing side uh, to a movie studio. Um, mm -hmm. And so there wasn't a place for us at Aspen anymore. So when we, at that point, which was year three of Aspen, I was like, I don't know what to do like i don't know do i just take my books back to diamond do i just like start over like what is this and and so but because we had had success with kickstarter to some degree with brand new titles mind you these were completely new titles these were not things that people already knew or understood i was like what would happen if we took penny for your soul and put that on kickstarter because people know what that is would we get a different result and we did. We got a very different result. Um, we did it again with issue two. We had almost the exact same result, which I was like, okay, that was good. We had, again, no attrition, right? We never have had really much of a, in a way of attrition from issue one, two, three. Did issue three, and we went from, so first issue did about 16,000. Second issue did almost to the dollar amount, 16,000. Mm -hmm. the, the, the third one jumped over 20. Uh, and right. I was like, oh, oh. Okay, I think we just found our foothold. Mm -hmm. And every single issue that we did, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, did more and more and more and more all the way to issue seven. Even though I was told by a guy who had done a handful of Kickstarters, um, he told me to my face, you cannot do what you're trying to do. I was like, it doesn't make any sense. He says, yeah, it does make sense. He says, if you go issue one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, your attrition rate will be so poor uh, that by the time you get to issue seven, you're not gonna be making any money. And I was like, that does, and I, in my head, that didn't make sense to me. Um, right. Only because we never had attrition at Diamond. We we really, I mean, obviously we fell a little. No, no one ever sells number one and then number two and three are the same numbers. But right. it was very, very small attrition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Because uh, because right. because that's the way that I do everything. It's, uh, right. I, the way that I think it should be done, so I'm probably just going to do it my way. Um, and and we've never had a series that we've put on Kickstarter that did not finish higher than when it first started. Even Oz that we did last year, we did three campaigns for Oz. Started, uh, I want to say nineteen thousand something like that. Maybe maybe in the twenties. I don't remember exactly. But we finished at thirty. So nice. every time we do a series, by the time we get to the end, we're higher than when we started. So you know. That, that just tells me that we're picking up fans along the way. Um, mm -hmm. People are new to the books. People are old to the books. They're like, yo, I want the books. And and we grow every time we do it. So, sorry, dude. Uh, yeah. It worked for me. I don't know why it didn't work for you, but it worked for me. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's it. And that's the whole thing with comics is there's no one way to do it. Don't right. let anybody tell you this is how it's done. Now, mm -hmm. you can look at what they do and say, Okay, I, I see what you're doing, and 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 what you're doing is working for you. What can I pull from your campaign, and 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 apply to what I do to to make my campaign better? 100. percent I'm a student of Kickstarter now, just like I used to be a student of, of comics. I'm a student of mm -hmm. Kickstarter. I watch what people do, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. I don't necessarily do what they do, but I'm like, I, I'm going to do my homework, but it's going to look like mine. It's not going to look like theirs. 
Right. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, success it has been there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, there Kickstarter is a little bit of luck, uh, combined mm -hmm. with a whole lot of work. Uh, and, and if you can, you know, if you can handle the work, the luck can be built. Right. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I got you, man. I got you. It was fantastic. So, I mean, when it comes down to like, you know, Critter and your other books, you know, what it obviously critter is your main focus at the moment because that's what you have the campaign on but like i i mean what's your darling like what's your personal darling between them ah there you go i mean I, i've had the figure forever everybody that asked me the same thing i normally they ask me when i'm at a con because they have all, there's all these books in front of them they're like yo you write all these books like which is your favorite i give them my business card on my business card it says like tom hutchison writer publisher something and then in right. quotes it says critter's daddy um right. so back in the old days folks all you millennials back in the old days of message boards and so on you had to have a catchy name uh for mm -hmm. your for your <laughs> for your for your kind of pre-social media uh and so um i was developing critter at the time and i was like well i gonna be critter's daddy and that's fine um and so that's that's kind of hung around a little bit i don't it's it's actually my instagram tag as well mm -hmm. critter's daddy uh it's the only place that it really exists anymore other than that but i i love superheroes i grew up with superheroes so for me it was very natural to start writing comics with a superhero which is what i did mm -hmm. uh and and penny for your soul really just became what it is because uh once critter was done from a writing standpoint and the artist was working on it I was like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> uh, right. I have to wait for this guy to do the do the art. So I started to develop another title, which was Penny for Your Soul, and and that's kind of what got me, you know, kind of to become much more pro prolific in writing. Because uh, there was a time we would be putting out three to five titles a month. We were mm. pumping stuff out uh, before right. we went over to Aspen. So um, you know, we had it going on. We really had it going on, uh, but the market at the retail side of things, retail stores um, just was not, it wasn't growing. Even, even now mm -hmm. people are like, well, it's growing. So it's like, it really isn't. I mean, it is, but it isn't, um, right. you know, some of these, some of these publishers that are like, you know, these really popular publishers, they're still not selling more than like two or 3000 units. I mean, that's really nothing. It's not mm -hmm. much unless it's like a licensed property, like transformers or something. A lot of this stuff is not landing at high numbers. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're fair numbers. I mean, they're numbers that we were doing, you know, back in the day. Um, but you know, if you sell 3000 units to diamond at even $2 a piece, that's $6,000. I mean, that's right. barely talking about your printing. Uh, and mm -hmm. then you got to pay the, the writer, the artist, the colorist, the, whatever. Uh, so it's a tough business being in the retail side of things. And you have to kind of treat that as almost as marketing more than anything else, at least in today's market. Like you want to be in there so people know you exist um but you have to again be using that as sort of a marketing dump like okay it's going to cost me five thousand dollars to make these books and put them in diamond uh right. maybe i get that money back and i break even great i put that back in we do it again um mm -hmm. but you're never going to sell enough units as a small press guy to to like make money uh, through diamond it's just it's just not going to happen you got to have other channels and all these publishers have other channels too so um mm -hmm. you know they sell direct they they do cons they do all the kind of stuff so um you have to have other channels don't look at diamond as like hey i made it in diamond i made it no 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 that's a good part of your overall plan that you should have um mm -hmm. but you you don't stop you can't stop at diamond you have to keep going yeah Definitely. Listen, um, like I said, I've been I've, I've been involved in indie comics for a minute. I started, I think I first published in 92. Mm -hmm. So back then we had 13 distributors. Mm -hmm. Right, and, right, right. You know, you could come in as a newbie and sell five, six, seven, eight thousand books. You sure. know, well, it was also a different market time, you know, in oh, the yeah. 90s. The 90s comics were a thing. I mean, they were and, and it's not that comics aren't a thing now, but back in the day, it was like people were going into comic stores and buying like five, 10 copies of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there was, it was just like, Hey, I need the new number one of whatever the hell it is. Give me 10 copies. And they yep. put them aside. I mean, that was the nineties, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And people had money, you know, For sure. I remember it was, it was fantastic. We would go to shows and, you know, people would just walk up and they'd be like, well, you know, yeah, grandpa come up and say five grand. Let me get five of each. 
mm -hmm. know, and they would just drop 300 bucks. Like it was nothing. It was just, hey, here you go. You know, yep. it, was, it was fantastic. All right. So uh, you got your, you got your figure, right? Okay. So like, what was that thought process going into the figure? I, I myself, have, I did a toy a few years ago, mm -hmm. right? Uh, here, let me pull this down. I'll show you the part. I did this guy. Oh, nice. He's one of the characters. He's a, he's a vinyl fig. Yep. Right? So you got a, not much in the way of articulation, but he does, he moves a couple people in a couple yeah. places. No, it looks great. Right? Now, so I know how much this sucker cost me. And like, you know, it was like, <laughs> you know, I did 1200 units. Yeah. Um, I did a number of colorways. This is one of the colorways we had about, I think seven colorways, mm -hmm. right? We had a glow, we have two glows. We had like blood splatter. We had like, you know, just regular paint jobs the whole, the whole year. Sure. So, you know, we're talking about a car, <laughs> right? Basically, <laughs> yeah. basically. Yeah, and, and sometimes uh, not necessarily a cheap one either. Right. So I mean, so I mean, obviously you've you've had you know, at great success with what you're doing with your books. So I mean, what at what point you said yes, I'm gonna get into this madness. Uh, I said yes when the toy company meet came to me and said, mm -hmm. "Is it time to do this?" I was like, "Yeah, it was time to do this like five years ago." But right. it's fine. It's fine that you're here now. Uh, it's time to do this. And and they were super supportive. They they loved our stuff. This this figure that I have here is not the figure that we're doing now. This was a custom made thing that they did for me. Uh, it is the same company. Um, mm -hmm. This is a custom made thing that they did for me out of an old McFarlane uh, Danger Girl figure. Um, <laughs> and nice. and so uh, when they came to me, they were like you know, we love your stuff. We got to, we got to figure out a way to do this. I was like, well, okay, let's figure out a way to do this. So, um, I wanted to do something easy. I wanted to do something simple. I wanted to do something, uh, that the molds were going to be easy. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we do do two versions of it like you did. That way we're not selling a thousand units of the same figure. It's easier right. to sell 500 units of, of mm -hmm. a figure than a thousand. So, um, we, we did this, we did critter, uh, because we knew that the sculpt wouldn't have to change in order for us to do the the different costume because it's just a paint app uh, variation. So there would be no extra cost in the sculpting. Um, it's 30 points for articulation. Uh, it's, it's It'll have a collector's box. Like it's a legit real, like what you would find at Comic-Con toy. Um, mm -hmm. And and it just, it, it blew me away. Like they were doing it, uh, 3D sculpting, right, is is how they they did the sculpting, and and so you're kind of looking at this gray right. thing, and you're like, yeah, that's, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, when we finally approved all the details, they're like, okay, we're gonna make one, uh, and then we're gonna paint it, and and then we can take pictures. I was like, okay, cool. So they they do it, they they send me the pictures, and my jaw just hits the floor. It's like, mm -hmm. what am I looking at? This is unbelievable. It's absolutely unreal once you see this thing painted in color. Um, and I, I knew we had it. I knew we were going to be okay. And then they did the alternate version, uh, uh, the darker blue and so on. Um, and I was like, yeah, man, this looks so good. Uh, and, but yeah, it, it's a high dollar that we need and we're almost there, which is nuts. Yeah. We have like mm -hmm. nine days left and we're almost, we're only $5,000 away. Uh, we need $35,000 to do this. We're at 30,000. We have nine days to go. Um, I mean, we should make this without any problem, um, just from our, our general Kickstarter, uh, sort of standards, our last two days on these campaigns, we generally land about 5,000 just in our last two days. So I really am not worried about it, but I would like to hit it before we get there. Like, I don't want to hit it on the last day and be like panicking all day. <laughs> I need like $27, man. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so hopefully we can get it by about Wednesday ish. Uh, and, and then kind of have some fun, maybe unlock some stretch goals and so on, uh, for the last few days. But, um, and then I'm going to be at a con, uh, February 12th, which is the day that this ends. Uh, so I will be just basically pimping this to everybody at the con, like, Hey, right. go pledge. I'll give you a free book right now. Go pledge for the thing. You know, <laughs> No, I mean, listen, man, I mean, like, you know, I saw it, I'll be honest, I've never read any of your books and I saw this and I was like, Oh yeah, I got to get one of these. So, you know, it looks incredible. It does. It does. It does. Yeah. It, it, this was one of the cool things, too, about Critter, right? Is when we designed Critter, 
we had to figure out like a color scheme kind of. And, and originally the guy was like, well, we could put her in pink. And I'm like, that's really stupid. Like we cannot have mm-hmm. a pink superhero. We're not doing this. Um, especially yeah. also with the red hair. It's like, no, this is all going to clash. Uh, so we, I, I think that he had, he had sent me some files and I'm, I'm nowhere near brilliant at Photoshop, but I know enough to kind of drop in some color and, and get a sense of what things should look like. So I started mm-hmm. dropping in some blues and stuff. I'm like, let's put some blue here. Let's leave this white here. And he was like, okay, let's try it. And then he did it. And it was like, yo, this looks great. Um, and then we had people drawing it. I was like, yo, this looks great. And then we had people cosplaying it, like walking around mm. in the cons. I'm like, oh my God, this looks great. Uh, and then of course we got the toy here and, and it just, it just comes to life. The, the, the design, Adam Weathers helped with the design, um, uh, forever indebted to him for that. Um, it came out fantastic. Uh, we've had so many amazing artists work on this book and, uh, now this thing actually could potentially really happen, um, and it's just like all I can do is think of like uh, you know Darth Helmet with his toys in the, in his room. It's like right. I'm just gonna play with my toy. You know, this mm-hmm. is this is gonna be me for for the rest of my life. It's playing with my toys. Nah, <laughs> listen, like I, I've been there, I've been there, man. And let me tell you, it's fantastic. You know, when you get that, you know, when you first get them, you're like, oh, look at this. This is great. I, I can't even imagine. Like I'm I'm already like ahead of the. I'm already thinking like, okay, what do I do when I go to a con? And I just bring like a hundred critter figures and put them on the table. Like, oh my god, right. that's going to be like a visual beyond anything I could I could even stomach. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> listen, that, that's if you have any left. Correct. That's that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right. That's if right. you have any left, it's like twenty. It's, uh, be lucky. You'd be lucky if you bring ten. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Right. It's 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 a beautiful thing, man. And she's gonna so she'll have different hands. You can see in those pictures. She'll she'll have yeah. fists so she can punch stormtroopers out and then she'll have the you know the claw hands uh and so on so you know it's 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 great it looks great and you can see right there it's like hyper posable man yeah i mean yeah. just just crazy what they're doing with the with the posing um mm-hmm. which is perfect for her because that's what she is she's a crazy athletic superhero so um yeah. it's awesome it's awesome yeah it is listen for me the thing was her face Yep. You know, because it, it's like, I was like, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of fakes and, you know, sometimes the face isn't right. And I was like, no, no, this face looks incredible. I love it. <laughs> we went through some faces. I was like, no, oh, yeah. that's not going to work. Let's uh, let, she's a little too masculine. Let's, let's fem her up a little bit. Let's, you know, mm-hmm. do, and even then it was hard because it's just gray, right? You're like, oh, right. it's really difficult when it's gray. So when they painted it and she got a little bit of color in her face and a little bit of red lips, I was like, yeah, we're, we're there. We're there. We got it. We got mm-hmm. it. We found it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you're you're almost there. I think you'll you'll uh, yeah, you're you're gonna make it no problem. You know, it's gonna be it's it's gorgeous. You know, so yeah. And I mean, for those that are watching, if you're not into toys, um, mm-hmm. we do have comics there that you can get as well. Uh, all of Critters Comics are available. Uh, you can just buy the first volume if you want. Try it out. If you want to dive all the way in, you can get all the volumes together in one big pack. Um, or if you like comics as well, you can get both versions of the toy. This is the really cool one. Get both versions of the toy and you're going to get a special, uh, Keith Garvey variant cover, um, on a critter number one reprint, uh, just added in. So you're going to buy both toys. You're going to get that Keith Garvey. There's only 200 of those being made and we're already halfway past, uh, those. So there are less than half left. If you are into comics and the toys, we have that too. And then there's art prints and all kinds of other fun stuff. So if you're not a toy guy or girl, that's cool. There's comics. Go try out some comics. If you like toys, man, this is going to be a very, very limited item. This is not something that when we do them and they sell out, we're just going to make some more. That's not going to happen. Uh, so if you've got one of these things, um, it, it's going to be a special item. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm looking forward to getting mine. Yeah. And, and doing this opens the door. So again, if you're not a critter fan, like if you're a BDI fan, but you're not into critter, you like Penny Mm -hmm. for your soul or legend of Oz, this opens the door to let us do anything else. So help us along again, just buy the comics. If you don't want the toy. Um, but if we can pull this off, then it's like, okay, we did this. Uh, what's next? Let's do Joan of Arc. Let's do Naomi. Let's do whatever we got to do. Um, and suddenly we have a toy line and not just, one sort of flash in the pan moment, which is, right. I mean, that would just be mind blowing. Yeah. No, no, I, I don't think you'll have that problem. <laughs> I really don't. It looks incredible. Uh, but 
you know, moving on. I mean, you we were talking earlier, and I, you know, I asked you, you know, you have something coming up with Ursa Minor. So what's going on with that? Talk to me about Yeah, that. so 2022 is the 10-year anniversary of Ursa Minor. So that is our, our werewolf, werebear. Werebear is the uh, the lead character. Werewolves, vampires, werebears. Um, it is 10 years of Ursa Minor, just like last year was 10 years of Legend of Oz. Um, mm -hmm. So 10 years of, of, uh, of Ursa Minor, we'll be doing three campaigns. The first campaign will be late March. Um, it'll be a 20-page book to kick the kick the whole thing off. Uh, and then July and October will wrap up the campaigns and the story arc with two 40 page books. So you're going to get five issues worth of quantity worth of story in three campaigns. So a complete story arc, because we tend to write in, in five issue story arcs. So a complete story arc over three campaigns this year. Um, and uh, the first issue is almost already done from a penciling standpoint. Uh, new art, new artist, Fabio Simiao uh, is doing the book uh he's doing amazing things we we're working on getting getting a colorist for it uh we're trying some people out but it's the book's going to be basically done by the time we launch the campaign which is awesome um and then as soon as he's done with this he's got to go do another book for somebody and then he's going to come back and start on the the 40 pager for july so um we're going to be way ahead of the schedule which is awesome i love being ahead finally uh mm -hmm. and um yeah so that'll be march uh, and then in, in between, we will have goth day returning, uh, May 22nd is world goth day. It's a real thing. Uh, we have sort of <laughs> adopted it as one of our own little moments of the year. We did a goth day, uh, book last year where we took all of our characters because all of our characters basically exist in their own universes. There's very little like crossover, like Dorothy doesn't exist where critter exists, you know, obviously. Right. Um, but what we did was we created a goth world where all mm. of these characters can kind of play in the same sandbox uh, in these modified versions of, of what they were, the goth versions, as, as we say. So um, mm. we'll be doing Goth Day issue two uh, in uh, in May. Um, and then other little fun things along the way. Princess Day is November, I think it's November 18th. Uh, that's another legitimate, like, real day is Princess Day. So we have Princesses right. versus Zombies coming back for Princess <laughs> Day. Uh, you know, so just all kinds of fun, weird stuff that we do throughout the year. But the focus really is the, is the critter action figure, which is happening right now. Uh, and then the 10 year anniversary for Ursa minor. All right, cool. Nice. Nice. I mean, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. It's, you know, looking great. So you, you've done like all of these books. So what, I mean, obviously you have all this, this stuff going on, but what, like, in about a year, year and a half, I would say in about a year, where do you see yourself? Like, like you, you're doing Critter now, right? And let's say everything works out. 2023. What would be next? 20, dude, I'm already at 2025. I'm already working oh, okay. 2025. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Even better. Even 2023 better. is the 10 year anniversary of Scheherazade. It's the 10 year anniversary uh -huh. of Scarusa's. Uh, right. 2024, we'll probably see the return of Penny for your soul, uh, mm -hmm. on and on and on. I mean, it's, it's endless and it's, it's tricky because I have so many different titles, um, right. that I want to get to. Um, but when we're hitting these specific, uh, uh, like decade anniversaries, it's like, I, I gotta celebrate these moments in time. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's what we're doing there. But, um, once we kind of break out of these 10 year anniversaries, we've got, you know, another, five to six years before we have a, a 20 year anniversary. Um, mm. and, and so that's when we can kind of get a little weird. We can do more lights, camera jungle. We can do more Kaiju Epic. We can bring back Antoinette. Uh, we can focus on princesses versus zombies heavier. Um, you know, I actually have, shh, I have a movie, uh, movie producer was, gave me the okay to go ahead and pitch princesses versus zombies and Antoinette to them as horror, uh, properties. Nice. Um, so, Maybe by 2025, we'll have, uh, you know, some sort of alternate media in the works um, for, for, for Big Dog Inc. as well. And, and, you know, again, if the toys keep going, man, I am more than happy to, like, pop out an action figure every year once we kind of figure out how to do it and, and what people are reacting to them and what the system is and how it works. Because this is all a giant experiment. Um, but if, uh, if it's like, yeah, we want more toys, phew, I'll bring you more toys, man. We'll, we'll we'll do this. We'll do this right. Nice. Now, uh, a production time on the toy. 
Yeah, so the production time, according to them, is about three months, roughly three months, assuming that all the dominoes fall properly, roughly three months. The only problem uh, is the current import system. Uh, that could hold things up. Like, we, we we kind of reached out a little further. We were kind of hoping for maybe a July-ish release of these things, because uh, if we go to production in February, March, April, May, June, July, that's, that's five more months. Um, right. But... It, I mean, for, for all we know, it could be on a boat sitting outside of, you know, Long Beach for another six months just because yeah. of where we are. But hopefully as we get that far, things will start to loosen up. You know, we'll, we'll have the trucking thing a little more, you know, handled. Mm -hmm. Cross your fingers for the summer, but it could end up being more of a Christmas release. But, um, you know, realistically, it is possible to get them out this summer, assuming... Everything import will. stuff it's sort of import stuff speeds up a little bit yeah but the right. production will i mean we'll be done you know by april may mm -hmm. um and then it's just a matter of getting them here right nice okay cool yeah man like i said looking forward to it. all right so listen we've been at this for a little bit we're at not at the end we're close but we're not there just yet right but feels before, like we just started man this has been like I, super I fast <laughs> but uh before we move on let everybody know where they can find you and your work, sir. Yeah. So basically I live on Facebook, everybody. I, I live on Facebook. I mean, that is where all of our information goes first and foremost. It is where you can send me messages. If you got questions uh, about anything, um, all that I live on Facebook. So just go right here. There's a, there's a page for big dog Inc. Or you can mm -hmm. just find me right there. Uh, if you're on Instagram, um, it is BDI comics, right? B D I mm -hmm. BDI comics, Twitter and Instagram. Um, and then uh, we do a Patreon as well. We have a Patreon, oh, nice. uh, patreon.com backslash big dog Inc. Um, where we do a lot of pre, uh, uh, pre showing of everything like our covers and so on. Like we're, those guys are already seeing what Ursa minor is, um, months ahead of time before anybody else is going to see it. They watch it get built. Um, right. they also get, uh, exclusive offers that no one else gets. Uh, they also get free comics every six months for being, uh, a 10, if you're a $10 tier, uh, backer every six months, you're just going to get a free comic, free variant mm -hmm. comic, just, just mm -hmm. because you're awesome. Uh, so there's all kinds of perks. So check out Patreon. Um, and, uh, and that's, that's pretty much what we do social media wise. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. So now, now onto my goofy questions. Okay, right? all right. <laughs> now, if because uh, I've seen you have a lot of alternative covers, right? Sure. So it oh, yeah. should be right into this one. So, if you had a choice of any artist, living or dead, that you could get to do that one incredible cover for you, mm -hmm. who would you pick? It is a one and a one A. They are equal in my mind, and they are both okay. uh, amazing. And and it is Arthur Adams. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is Todd McFarlane. Okay. Uh, they are the top of the list for me. They have always been at the top of the list for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I will never have them, either of them. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I, well, I mean, yeah, again, if I want to like, you know, get a <laughs> mortgage on my house, yeah, I could probably right. get Arthur, uh, you know, but those two guys, I have loved Arthur's work for so, so long. I've loved what Todd did with Spider-Man. My first Spider-Man comic I ever bought was a Todd McFarlane book. Um, mm. And and he changed comics for me, the way that I looked at them. So um, Todd Todd's huge and uh, and Arthur Adams, they are at the top of the list, yeah. yeah. Uh, listen, two great choices. Now, um, all right, so let's say uh, you got the golden ticket and they said, Tom, <laughs> Tom, pick any one of them. Come up to the big show, whatever the whatever you might think the big show is, Marvel, DC, Image, any of these companies, any one of these companies, any one of these um, titles or whatever, or IPs. And they said, Tom, please come write this for us. What book would you pick? Uh, I, I, they don't want me. They don't want me. <laughs> because, don't, nothing that, because nothing that I would want to do mm -hmm. would be anything that they care about. Like they'd be like, what are you talking about? No one cares about these characters. I'd be like, I know, mm -hmm. but I do. And, and like, I'm not going to come in and be like, well, I want to reinvent wonder woman. Like, no man, she's been reinvented. Like for 60 years, that chick's been reinvented and reinvented. It is, you can't do anything with those characters anymore, mm -hmm. but they have tons of like B and C level characters. Yeah. And, and the proof in the pudding of this is like the suicide squad movies. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, 
here's a whole bunch of just shit ass characters that most of the time have absolutely yeah. nothing going on, mm -hmm. but you know, there are ways to kind of put them in, in, in the case of suicide squad, put them together, make them interact with each other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So for me, I, I have no aspirations of Marvel or DC. Uh, but if I were to basically be given, okay, do what you want. Right. Um, I would, I would probably love to do, um, and, and it's never been done, which is even more awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love to do a princess Python, uh, story. Uh, I used to love all the captain America stuff with all the serpent mm -hmm. society right. and all those guys, black Mamba and, you know, death mm -hmm. adder and all. I was like, yo, these are bad ass characters. They weren't, but they were sure as hell fun, you right. know? And so I would love to do a princess Python story with the serpent society somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, just not tied into some gigantic event. Just no. let me just tell a story with these, these bizarre characters. That's, that's all mm -hmm. I'd want to do there. Um, you know, and then with DC, honestly, I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, right. I, I'm a big Wonder Woman fan. I'm a big Zatanna fan. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know that I have anything to 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 say with those characters, right? It's like, you don't want to just be there like, hey, I get to write Batman, yo, and I'm going to like do something. Like, I don't know. Like, what do you do with these characters that have been around for so long? So for me, I'd be focusing on, on smaller characters um, that really haven't had attention. Um, and sometimes for good reason <laughs> and other times just because no one's really come in and said, well, how do we tell a princess Python story? Uh, mm -hmm. And well, I'll, if you want to know Marvel, I'll tell you that's, that's how it works. <laughs> there you go. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. All right, cool. I have a, I have a list. I, I, I have this thing that I do is I, I like doing comparatives, right? Okay. So I'll throw you a couple of softballs at first and then uh, we'll, we'll work <laughs> it to, to, to the crazy one. Oh my okay. God. All right. All right. Godzilla or Gamera? Oh, come on. That's that's that is softball. That's Godzilla <laughs> all day long. All day long. Okay. Uh Captain America or Batman? Uh, like uh, that's hard. Uh because there are eras of each that are good and eras of each that are garbage. Um mm. but I would probably say Captain America just because he comes with the Serpent Society. Okay. Cool, cool. Um Jason Voorhees or Michael Myers? Oh, Michael Myers. Michael Myers. Michael Myers. I love Jason. I love the Friday movies. I think the Friday movies are a better series kind of overall. Uh, but it's Michael. Okay. Fair enough. Not Fair enough. not the current Michael, the old Michael. Not, <laughs> not this. No. Whatever's happening now, Michael is a no. The old Michael. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool. Um, ooh, Walking Dead. Or Dawn of the Dead? Uh, just kill me. I don't want to see either of them. Just kill me. <laughs> Guys, you're not a zombie guy. Just kill me. Uh, there, are, there are very specific zombie things that I like. Um, mm -hmm. Walking Dead is not one of them. Um, okay. All of the Dawn, Night of, like that right, series right, right. is not one of them. Okay. Um, and that's kind of where princesses versus zombies came from, right? Is that somebody asked me, they were like, well, what would you do for a zombie story then? And I was like, dude, I don't know. It would have to be something so weird and so totally outside the box that it wasn't even really a zombie story. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and hence princesses versus zombies was born. <laughs> gotcha. All right, cool. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. I always put a daughter of the dead. That's the, that's the movie that traumatized me as a child. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one my, my sister took me to it. I was like, I've never liked zombie movies since that. Like, Fuck zombies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's it for that one. You know. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna say that. Uh Burn or Perez. Burn or Perez. Oh, Perez. Perez. Okay. Uh I I and and I guess we we have to talk about the writing or the art, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I mean, burn, burn is epic. Perez mm -hmm. is epic, but I like, I like George's art more. So mm -hmm. I, I would just lean to Perez just because of that. And, okay. and I've met George before and George is a fantastic dude. Uh, Brandy. and I've never met burn. So I have no, mm -hmm. no experience with him. Uh, so we're, yeah. we're going to, we're going to lean into George. No, no, that fair enough. Fair enough. I've met him both. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, burn, he runs hot and cold. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Right? Uh, but, you know, listen, I, I got one story about him. Uh, I'm going to tell it real quick. 
drove to Pittsburgh, uh, had a couple of friends that were with us, uh, long time comic book fans. Um, they see Burn is there, they go over to Burn. My my guy, he had just finished illustrating a, a book we had done together. He handed it to Burn. Burn said, Oh, loved it, looked through it. He says, and then uh Burn looked up at them and he says, um, oh, he had my friend sign it for him. And uh Burn said, Uh, do you have anything for me to sign for you? And they were like, Oh, we're so sorry, Mr. Burn. We just came out of New York, we didn't know you were gonna be here, blah blah blah. So he's like, oh, Okay, no problem. He pulls out a, a case of books that some dealer had given to him and it was the first issue he had done on fantastic fours the one with like, as diablo with them hanging upside down in the in the candles he signed the two copies handed to the guys they were like thank you they came back to the table and they were floating i've never seen two grown men float before they they floated nice. right to the table so that's my nice. john bird story i always i tell that one because i hear so many bad ones <laughs> about it <laughs> Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. Sorry. Right, so let, let's continue. Fifth Element or Stargate? Oh, Stargate. Okay. Stargate. Yeah. Only the movie. I don't care about the TV shows. Uh, right. But the movie. The movie was brilliant. I, I like it mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Bram Stoker or Mary Shelley? You know, I think it's less about them and more about what they created. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Frankenstein, so it's Mary. Mm -hmm. Um. I haven't read either of the original books i tried to read mm -hmm. frankenstein once it's so hard it's so it, hard to read because uh, just because of what it is you know yeah. and i i know people that have tried to read uh bram Stoker's dracula and they're like yo this is brutal to read and i'm like yo i know man just watch the movie it's fine you, you'll get the gist of it uh so uh so mary shelley yeah gotcha all right cool um hmm. bernie wrightson or barry windsor smith oh wrightson Okay. Yeah, right. And I, I, Windsor, nothing wrong with him, uh, mm -hmm. but it's it's sort it's very similar to like Perez and, and Byrne. Like, right. uh, it's just whichever style you're going to gravitate towards one or the other. Just, and that's just the way it is. Right. And Wrights and was uh, unbelievable. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> here's what Hulk Hogan or Ric Flair. Oh God, I you <laughs> know I used to be a Hogan fan. Uh, when I was dumb as a kid, uh, I, was I, 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 you know, I, when I used to, I remember I was at a Hulk Hogan Saturday night's main event once, mm -hmm. um, where he fought, uh, uh, Hercules. Uh, okay. and I remember being so into wrestling, but not, I was a dumb kid. I had no idea and this was all fake, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I remember Ho him getting Hogan up in the, the, the backbreaker thing. Yeah. And I was in the stands like, Oh my God, Hogan just lost. Like, whoa. And, uh, and the guy beside me like totally broke it all down. He's like, now nope, look, he's just going to, he's going to get out. He's going to start shaking around. He's going to Hulk up. He's going to beat. And I was just like, how do you know all of this? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's like, because this is what every Hulk Hogan match is. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, I think uh, I think in the long run it's Ric Flair. Flair has has more longevity to him, mm -hmm. uh, even though he's basically just woo. Yes. Uh, you know he he definitely had uh, the longevity. So we'll we'll roll with Flair. Okay, fair enough. Fair. Listen, that woo you hear at every place. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Rick Ric Flair will live forever through that damn woo. That, that's right. That's right. You know? Um, Eisner or Toth. Um, I don't know a whole lot of Eisner stuff. I, I'm aware okay. of Eisner, obviously. I I've never really read the spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Toth, I'm I'm more familiar with the art that he does. Right. Um from from mostly from a lot of cartoon stuff that he did a lot of design stuff for. Um, mm -hmm. so probably Toth. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um Lord of the Rings or Star Wars? Oh, Star Wars. Get okay. that fake trilogy out of here. Lord of the Rings trilogy. Get that out. That nine hour monstrosity. Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. Uh, uh, is that because you're not a big fantasy fan or? It's it's weird. I have come to the realization that I'm not. I, it mm -hmm. doesn't seem like in my life, I remember fantasy stuff. And I love the Hobbit, like the old Hobbit cartoon. Like that's oh, yeah. a brilliant, that's... brilliant cartoon. Mm -hmm. Uh and when Lord of the Rings was coming out, I remember being excited about it. I was like, oh, this should be pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it just it just was not cool. I was like, no, that, no, this is not working for me. I don't know what's happening. but I And that's when I started to come to realization, this stuff might not be for me. Um, 
because I'm I'm not gravitating towards anything like it. Like I don't do The Witcher. I don't do like any of that kind of stuff. So it's kind of it's no no no. Uh, and that's a really weird realization for me because it's high fantasy and it's like this is kind of like it's sort of what I do. I mean I don't do anything like that. I don't, I don't like have like a Lord of the Rings book, but um, you only you got know. three dragons behind you. I know, right? <laughs> But see, these three dragons all fight Godzilla, so it's fine. Oh, okay, maybe. it's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Kirk or Picard? Uh Picard. 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 Yep, yep, yep. I remember watching Kirk when I was younger because my dad mm -hmm. would watch Star Trek. Um, right. But I wasn't picking up on anything. I was, I was again. I was too dumb. I was playing with Star Wars toys when Star Trek was on TV. So I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not really paying attention to anything here. Um, but. Over time, Picard became the guy. That's mm. that's a that's a that's a strong character, is Picard. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, hmm. Frank Miller or Alan Moore? Oh, I, don't know. I don't like either of them, to be honest. I You know, uh, there are things. Actually, I, I mean, it's probably Alan Moore because there are things that mm. Alan has done that I like. Um, but it's, it's not the things that you would expect. Uh, okay, and, well, and, um, let, let but, me see. Am I surprised? You? Uh, um, and now I have to really think about it because mm -hmm. like most of it is a no. Um, I remember the first league of extraordinary gentlemen series, mm -hmm. the first series like that yeah. a lot. Um, yeah. again, just kind of cool the way that he did all that stuff, but like all of his seminal work, Watchmen, Befriend and Detta, uh, swamp thing, all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, no, no, no I don't, I don't want, I don't want any of that. Here's the weirdest part. Now I'm going to take it to a really weird part as we kind of get to the wrap up stage. Mm -hmm. I love the Watchmen movie. Okay. Okay. Love That's the for, Watchmen I, movie. I, I'm I like, like this is freaking cool, man. And mm -hmm. so I had never read Watchmen before. I knew what it was. I was aware of it. I was around when it was coming out, but I was like, this, this is not like Batman. So I don't care. Um, so I watched the movie and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And I knew people that were really big into Watchmen. I had friends that were big into the comics. So I was like, okay, I'm going to find the comic. So I found the comic in like a 50% off trade bin at a con. Uh, mm -hmm. And I started to try to read it. And I was like, this is impossible to read. This is <laughs> impossible. This is so dense mm -hmm. and so just like mind, visually mind numbing um, that I, I, I couldn't even do it. Even knowing what I knew from the movie and the stuff that I did like that that is in the book. It's like I couldn't, I, I could, I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. Uh, so yeah, so it's very, very odd. And, but Frank Miller, I really don't. I, I here. Okay, again, really weird, right? The only mm -hmm. thing Frank Miller that I own is All Star Batman and Robin. That's it. I don't <laughs> own anything else, and I only own that because it is the biggest dumpster fire of of a, of a writing example. That you can ever see in your lifetime from from a higher up, you know, level. It's like you could pretty much tell that Frank was like, you know, I can probably do anything I want, and they wouldn't even care. Yeah. And that's when we got the goddamn Batman, and I was mm -hmm. like, this is trash. This is utter trash. But it's Jim Lee art, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so this 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 horrible writing combined with this amazing art creates this completely bizarre uh comic book series that had no business to exist uh and that's the only thing that i own of frank miller <laughs> gotcha. fair enough so listen uh we'll, uh, we'll we're, we're close to the end yeah. we'll ask you two more questions and yeah. then we'll wrap this sucker up uh pinhead or freddy krueger oh freddy i i do not understand pinhead i don't understand him i don't get it i'm sorry i literally mm -hmm. don't get it i love the final uh, Hellraiser movie, uh, Bloodlines, mm -hmm. where they show the origins of the box, uh, right. and then and then spoiler alert, they trap all the Cenobites in a space station. Like mm -hmm. that's freaking crazy. I love that movie. Uh, every other Hellraiser, I do not understand. So yeah, give me the Freddy. Give me the Freddy. Freddy. Okay. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, see, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question. I don't know if you're familiar with these two shows, though. Okay. Um, Firefly or Farscape. Oh, Firefly. Oh, Firefly. Okay. I, I listen, I have to apologize. I'm going to just apologize again. I'm going to do it publicly right here. For decades, I would hear people talking about Firefly. 
Oh my God. It's so, oh my God. Firefly, Firefly. Oh my God. Oh my God. The, I'm a brown coat. Oh my God. Oh my God. They bring it to bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. I'm like, yo, it's over. It's not that good. It got canceled. Shut up. <laughs> right. And and so uh, a friend of mine um, had the series on uh, uh, on DVD and he was like, just, just take it and watch it. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, fine. And I, I remember seeing it on TV like a couple of times, but I wasn't really engaged. So it didn't connect with me at all. Uh, mm -hmm. But he gave me the DVDs and I was like, okay, fine. Uh, so I watched it and I binged through it in a day. Like I just mm -hmm. tore through it all. And when I got to the end, I had to call him. I was like, okay, you're right. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it sucks. That there's not more. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to publicly apologize to everybody <laughs> that I teased <laughs> for the last 20 years. Uh, yeah. Cause it's really good. It's really good. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's firefly. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Tom, thank you so much for showing up. And one more time, please let everybody know where they can find you and your work. Yeah. Facebook, come to Facebook, find me yeah. here, find the, the page here. Uh, I also do a, a live sales show on Facebook for the comic book shopping network. I do that every Wednesday and Sunday. Uh, so right. if you like comics, you want to just buy some comics, come chat about comics. We do that there. Uh, Instagram and Twitter are BDI comics. Uh, and then Patreon, Big Dog Inc., patreon.com backslash Big Dog Inc. That's where we do all our stuff. All right, cool. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And please, let everyone know we're here. Hit like, hit subscribe, so on and so forth. Go check out the Critter um, Kickstarter. The toy is awesome. You know, go check it out. Go pick yourself up a toy. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. All right, so thank you so much, Tom, and I'll be talking to all you guys later. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, hold on.